people are always asking me, what wine fridge should I get? What should I look for in a wine cooler? So in this video, we're gonna go over six things that I think are must-haves when you're buying a wine fridge. So if you're wondering, Vince, why are you sitting on the floor? The answer is because that's where my wine fridge is. I had this installed when we bought our new place and we kind of redid our kitchen a bit. Now I'm also gonna go over six things that I think are really important that every wine fridge should have. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, the first thing you wanna look for is a wine fridge that has the right capacity for you. And that might be different than what it is for somebody else. So for me, this is a 46 bottle capacity fridge. You also might want something really big if you have the space and budget. I've seen the big tall ones that go for, you know, over 100 bottles. I've also seen countertop ones that are for eight bottles or 10 bottles. My old one was 18. So one, what is your space constraint? But also, what do you use the fridge for? So I used to have my old fridge that I just kept my long-term storage in, things that were going several years. And then my daily drinkers, I just kept at room temperature because my room didn't get too hot or too cold. And as long as you drink them within a year, you'll be fine. Whereas if you want to use it to make sure you have all your wines at the exact right temperature all the time, so you can just grab a bottle at any given moment and they're all properly chilled, well, yeah, you're going to need a bigger fridge. So ask yourself how you use the fridge, uh, how much space you have, and pick the right size for you. Number two, my recommendation would be to get a built-in fridge. Now the difference between built-in fridges and freestanding is that the built-in has the vent in the front. And that's really important because if you put it in a cabinet and the vent is in the back, like in a freestanding fridge, you're gonna overheat the fridge because there's nowhere for the hot air to escape. And even if you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna put it on a counter, or I'm just gonna keep it on the ground, so I'm just gonna get a freestanding fridge, well, one day you might have what happened to me happen, which is you'll move and you'll wanna put it in a cabinet and you can't, or you renovate your kitchen. So you might as well just get the built-in one from the beginning because that can be used as freestanding, but can also be put in the cabinet. So that would be my number two advice. All right, the number three thing that you wanna look for is a door that can switch sides. And what I mean by that is actually the handle. What happened here, for instance, was I moved in, I thought the handle was gonna be on this side, but it couldn't open all the way because this windowsill and then I couldn't pull out the shelves. So I had to switch the door. And if I didn't have the option, I would have just been stuck being unable to open the door all the way. So when you're looking at these fridges, make sure the door, unless it's French doors that open from the middle, make sure it can switch and the handle can go to the other side. All right, the number four thing you wanna look into is if you want a dual zone or a single zone. And this goes back to how you're gonna use the fridge. If you're gonna use it only for long-term storage, then I'd recommend just getting a single zone. You don't end up wasting space, you get more capacity, and you just keep it at 55 degrees Fahrenheit or about 13 degrees Celsius, which is the ideal temperature for long-term wine storage. If you're gonna use it for your daily drinkers, well then I'd say get the dual zone, and that's how I use this fridge. I keep the top at around 40 to 45 for my whites to be perfect temperature, and my reds around 55 to 60 or so. I did actually make an entire video on YouTube that you can watch here where I talk about wine storage and wine drinking temperature, so definitely watch it if you haven't yet. All right, the number five thing you wanna look for are shelves that make sense. I think they absolutely should be slide out. You wanna be able to pull out your bottles and see them without having to dig through, take everyone out individually, so they should slide out. Ideally, they slide out on rollers or casters. Now, this is usually an expensive feature, but if you wanna splurge, I think that's really important. You wanna make sure there's enough clearance space for burgundy bottles. A lot of wine fridges will advertise their capacity, but that's for Bordeaux bottles, and the fatter burgundy bottles won't actually fit. And then you wanna make sure, if it's important to you, that they're adjustable. Now, if you have, a, say, magnums, right, and you wanna be able to adjust the shelves for that, well, you wanna make sure your fridge has the capability to do that. All right, and then number six, the last thing I would say to look for is do you want a compressor-based fridge or a thermal electric? Now, the compressors are a little bit louder. They have a hum, kind of like your regular refrigerator, um, but they cool better, especially if you're in a hot climate. If you're somewhere like in Arizona where it gets really, really hot and you need your fridge to work hard or if maybe the sun's coming down on it, you definitely need compressor-based. But the nice thing about thermoelectrics is that they're silent. Uh, so maybe what you could do is get a small thermoelectric-based one for your long-term storage where it doesn't need to get too cold. You keep that in your basement. And then you get a daily drinker one that's compressor-based. You don't mind the humming, 
in your regular kitchen because you have humming from your regular fridge and your other appliances and there's noise going on anyway. Um, most of the bigger fridges will be compressor based just by necessity, uh, but definitely something else to consider. All right, I know I said six things, but here's a couple other factors that might be important to you that I think are worth considering. And the number one thing I'd say is read the reviews, see what other people said in their experiences, because that'll give you a clue to some of these. Uh, from, I mentioned sound, see how loud it is. See what people say. If it's noticeably loud, obviously you wouldn't want that. Uh, does it have UV protection? Is it double paned glass? Mine is actually near my window, so that's actually important to me. This does have UV protection because I don't want sun going in here and messing with my wines. Is the temperature consistent? This fridge is not bad. The top, I set it to 45, it stays about that. Because it's a dual zone, the bottom, even though I set it to 55, is usually like a little lower, maybe like 52. But I think that's because, you know, it can only be so different from the one up top. If you got a single zone, I think it might be a bit more consistent. How cold does it get? You know, if you're gonna be storing sparkling wines and you want them ready to go, well, those have to be like between like 38 and 40 degrees. So you wanna make sure your fridge can get really cold up to that temperature. Do you want a lock on your fridge? Now this fridge doesn't have that, but maybe you have kids and you wanna make sure they can't get into your wine stash. So you wanna have a lock on it. And then the last thing I'll say is just read the reviews on the build quality, uh, maybe the customer support. You know, you want a fridge that looks and feels solid. I like that this has this nice solid stainless steel front. I kind of like the way the grill looks in the front. So overall, I love the build on this. Uh, make sure you get a build that you like, how it looks in your kitchen, because you're gonna look at it all the time. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and check us out on our main page for all our travel episodes and more content. I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.